Different car companies use different forms of all-wheel drive. In a certified independent test, we chose five vehicles within the same class to see how those different forms of all-wheel drive transfer power. In this specific ramp test, the two front roller mechanisms and left rear rollers are freewheeling to simulate slippery road conditions, offering virtually no traction. And by covering the right rear rollers, we leave that as the only source of traction. The driver will maintain constant pressure to the accelerator, and once the wheels slip, each system should direct enough power to the right rear wheel to climb the ramp. First up, Nissan and its intuitive all-wheel drive system. In the intuitive all-wheel drive system, power is flowing to all wheels. And we can see it trying to shift more power to the right rear wheel. But it's not enough to move the vehicle forward. Next up, Honda and its real-time four-wheel drive. Now, this is a front-wheel drive-based all-wheel drive system, where all the power is in the front until it detects slipping. And only then is it transferred to the rear wheels, but there's clearly not enough power to climb. Let's see how Ford and its intelligent four-wheel drive does. The driver is maintaining constant pressure to the accelerator, but the vehicle appears to surge as it tries unsuccessfully to send power where it's needed most. And did you notice the side-to-side -side movement? That's called torque steering, and is often due to an asymmetrical drivetrain, where the left and right front axles are different lengths, and the driver has to fight that torque to keep the vehicle in line. How about Toyota and its on-demand four-wheel drive? As in all these vehicles, the driver is maintaining constant pressure to the accelerator. But listen. The engine speed changes as the system tries to take control from the driver and transfer power to the right rear wheel, but there is not enough power to provide the traction it needs. Finally, let's look at Subaru and the symmetrical all-wheel drive system. With power flowing continuously to all wheels, it senses the loss of traction and sends more power to the right rear wheel, allowing it to find its grip and move the vehicle up the ramp. This is a unique test. But by focusing on one wheel, we can clearly see how different systems react to a loss of traction and where their power is actually transferred. Ideally, an all-wheel drive system should be able to direct power where it's needed most. Symmetrical all-wheel drive does exactly that, and this system is standard in every Subaru vehicle. Thing starts allowed. To make this ascent a real test of all-wheel drive, we arranged to have the cars stop partway up the hill. Here's the Forester coming up to this challenge. Stop, and then go. Notice the complete lack of wheel spin. No fuss, no bother, just up the hill it goes. It looks easy, for a Subaru that is. Now, let's take a look at some competitors. The Ford Edge with its optional all-wheel drive system has a powerful V6 engine but it still can't muster the power to make it up the hill. Here's the Chevrolet Equinox with its optional on-demand all-wheel drive system. Let's see how it fares. Plenty of front wheel spin, but no forward movement. Notice how it reacts as if no power is going to the rear wheels. The Toyota RAV4 calls its optional all-wheel drive system full-time four-wheel drive. Again, you can see that it is very front-drive oriented and simply doesn't send enough power to the rear wheels to get the RAV4 up the hill. The Honda CRV, with its optional real-time four-wheel drive is a strong competitor for the Forester. But as we've seen with the others, the CRV's all-wheel drive system doesn't give it enough capability for this challenge.
The new Nissan Rogue, another Forester competitor, calls its optional all-wheel drive system intuitive all-wheel drive. In this case, it appears that too much power is going to the far side wheels. Plenty of dust, but no forward progress. And just to show that Subaru capability and control is shared among all of our vehicles, here's the Tribeca. Doesn't it make it look easy? Even a hill this steep is no challenge for a Subaru.